September 4th, 2000, 2012. This is our last session of Making a Difference for, for this year. I'm sad. I'm sure. You're supposed to say dance. <laughs> yeah. Marco, you look sad. Yes. <laughs> Welcome in Missouri. Thank you for joining us tonight. We've got some great guests for the show this evening. Our first guests are with B. Cotton. Don, uh, our, our answer, 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 yes. answer Adams. Tereska Chapman. I love it. Dan Hannikin. Folks, B. Cotton. What's that, what's that say? Boone County Offender Transition Network. Yes, sir. Tell us about B. Cotton. What, what is B. Cotton? Uh, again, it's the Boone County Offender Transitional Network, and uh, it's a coalition uh, set up to Help the uh, to help ease the transitioning of ex-offenders back into society. Wow, didn't even know you existed. Outstanding. So, so when, you, when you talk about offenders reintegration, you're talking about reintegration into a community. Now, do you, is this just for Boone County, or is it a, a mid-Missouri region, or? Well, uh, the B Cotton is for Boone County, but there are other MRPs around the state who they do, do something the exact similar. same thing. Absolutely. And you can't do this alone. We can't yeah. do it alone. Um, the the reintegration process for returning prisoners uh, involves a lot of different things. Um, some of the some of the bigger uh, predictors of success and recidivism is safe housing, uh, gainful full time employment. Uh, being free from substance abuse, family reunification. So as a, as a network, we like to bring different community partners together to discuss the issues, share information, share resources, so that we can meet the comprehensive needs of offenders when they're released from prison. And Teresa Chapman, you make it all happen. You, mm -hmm. keep, you keep these guys and everybody else organized, right? Try to, but I, I love can't. it. <laughs> so how, what are the challenges for you? Uh, we try to keep the uh, networking together. Uh, we have Voc Rehab, Phoenix Program, uh, Love Inc., and yet Youth Empowerment Zone. They are a couple of our agencies that we come together in partnership with to keep them from going back to prison or try to keep them from going back to prison. What, what, how successful are you? I would what, like what, to... What, I, what's your recidivism rate? Right? <clears throat> Um, I don't have an exact figure uh, for you, but I would like to think that uh, we're, we're definitely getting the job done. Uh, what's important now is that uh, the community uh, become aware of B Cotton, and it'd be nice if they started attending our meetings and showing some support so that we could start to impact rec recidivism on some other levels. There, you know, uh, some legislative issues, uh, mm -hmm. policies and housing that might preclude one from applying for low income housing, which is one of the needs that an ex offender might have, or uh, that little box on the application that says, have you ever been convicted of a felony, which sometimes bars you completely from job opportunity. Are there plenty of opportunities out there or in Boone County for, for ex offenders? Uh, well, through uh, B Cotton and some of our affiliates, we do have uh, some job training programs and uh, even some placement. And uh, we're hoping that as it continues to evolve and the community becomes more involved, that there'll be more opportunities in the future. Outstanding. Dan, we talked about partnerships. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it literally takes a village. It, it does. It does. I, we believe that the Department of Corrections does a pretty good job of preparing the offender for the community. Uh, one of the major roles of B. Cotton is to prepare the community for the offender. And, and we do have a stake in this. Uh, not just as B. Cotton as an organization is certainly concerned about the indi individual offender that's being released, but uh, we want to redu reduce their risk to reoffend, which means we want to reduce victimization in the community. Uh, people in Columbia have heard a lot lately about the spike in crime and particularly violent crime. It's, it's reasonable to expect that a lot of the individuals perpetrating these crimes are people who have returned from prison. So there's, there's two sides to the coin. You know, there's the, re, there's the personal redemption of the individual coming back from prison, and then there's the public safety piece too. And the more successful we are at B. Cotton of bringing partners together, to facilitate the success for the individual offenders' lives, the safer our community is going to be. You're, you're exactly right. It, take, it takes a village. It takes every, everyone has a stake in this. Mm -hmm. 
What, what what's your vision for 2013? What any changes coming coming around? Uh, well, I, I'm hoping that as we continue to evolve, that uh, we uh, start to work on the familial aspect. Uh, I think over the past 10 years, uh, the number of children with incarcerated parents has increased by like 122% with mothers in jail and with fathers in, in prison by about 76 percent. So there seems to be uh, an, an intergenerational uh, 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 aspect to, uh, to, to crime too. So I'm, I'm hoping that we can take a, another approach that uh, we can impact uh, the future of the crime rate by helping the people coming home be better parents and preventing their children from we, we got to break the cycle answer we got th th there's a cycle here what can the community do to to help to, to enhance what you're doing to to do to support what you're doing how can the community get involved i think there's a lot of resources in columbia already what's missing is the sharing of information what's missing is the the public awareness for example, a lot of people don't realize that the state of Missouri releases 20,000 offenders each year in this state. That's over 400 people a week getting out of prison. So just to get that message out there, to let people know it does impact our community, you probably want to go home and you hope that your TV is in your house when you get home tonight. You have a stake in this. So to get involved, we encourage different partners to come to the table with different, different levels of expertise. It could be something as simple as, as providing mentorship to somebody who's released from prison. You may own a small business and you're in a position to potentially hire the right person when they're released from prison. You could work for a social service agency that has some funding to provide basic needs for these individuals and you haven't thought about the returning offender. You've been isolated on, on some other population. So we encourage people, we have meetings once a month. They're on the third Thursday at 9 a.m. At the, at the Boone County Health Department. And those are open to the public and we encourage people to come and, and see where you would fit into a conversation like this. Good partnerships with the state of Missouri? Absolutely, Absolutely. The, the Boone County Offender Transition Network, as Answer was saying, it's what we call a local Missouri reentry team. Mm -hmm. Part of the, the Missouri reentry process, Answer referred to MRP. So there's 33 to 35 local teams around the state and we're connected to the state, the Missouri Department of Corrections, and then there's a, a state steering team at the state level that meets in Jeff City. Phone number? I don't have a phone. We How don't about have a phone. www.bcotton.org. You can check us out -C -O -T -N. on our website. B-C-O-T-N. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for being our guest this evening. We wish you the best. Central Missouri, pay attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Welcome back to the December edition of Making a Difference. I'm Angel Mendez, and today I'm here with two ladies who are going to talk about um, a little bit about a research project they called Out Proud and Healthy. But before you start talking about that, let me get a little bit about who you are and what you do and who you're with. Okay. You first. All right. Uh, my name is Sue Pereira, and I am a physician, and I work for the university, and um, two of my colleagues are the co-investigators for the Out Proud and Healthy project. Um, what started as a uh, smoking project, um, uh, looking at smoking rates within the LGBTQ community, um, has then sort of transitioned into what's now called the Out Proud and Healthy project with additional grant funding. So um, it started, the project started at looking at LGBT persons and smoking rates and looking at how we can develop smoking cessation um, mm, um, guidelines and things like that for the state um, and then it's kind of evolved from there. So. Yeah. And my name is Leon Braxton. I'm the executive director of the LGBT Center of St. Louis and I've been on the project now for two years and it, like Susan said it started kind of, uh, it started in St. Louis County was where we got our first grant from because St. Louis County got 13 million dollars to do various health issues and so then now the research project is funded by the Missouri Department of Health and that's where we get our grant money from now to continue researching um, and helping people in the LGBTQ community stop smoking. Right, and you all are from two you know, different organizations and you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier when we talked that this is sort of a collaboration of organizations that have come together to kind of 
create this project, this research project. So ultimately, where did the idea come from for this project? Um, well, actually, it came up because um, we in the LGBT community have a lot of health disparities. Like we don't go to the doctor, we don't take care of ourselves. We ha um, have, even in the state of Missouri, LGBT smokers are twice that of non-LGBT smokers. We have two times the rate of smokers here in Missouri. So um, I work at the center, Cheryl Whalen, which is not here today, she works for SAGE, Metro St. Louis, and also um, Mr. Kafka works for The Spot. So it's a collaboration of several organizations throughout the state of Missouri mm -hmm. to try to get Missouri and LGBT to stop smoking. Yeah, and it's, we've kind of like involved Springfield, <clears throat> Places, um, St. Louis, less so Kansas City, but, yes. a few, but a few organizations from Kansas City, like um, Primo, is mm -hmm. Primo's in St. Louis, yes. is that right? No, Promo, uh, oh, Promo, 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 Promo's in St. Louis. We have a chapter in um, Springfield that's helping out. Right. We have the Kansas City Health Department that's helping out. It's right. actually an advisory board. I also sit on the advisory board of this project, and we all get together once every three months here in Columbia. It's an all-day session, and we talk about our successes, our failures, what's working and what's not working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trying to talk about like um, if we observe, like looking at advertising and things like that, and sort of educating people that the advertising is sort of negatively targeted toward LGBT persons. Because they make it real, especially toward our LGBT youth. Because our youth, as I was telling you before, um, the death rate among the LGBT youth here in Missouri, if you add up all the other diseases or accidents that they die from, smoking is the number one cause of death. If you add all those up, it's greater than that. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to target our youth. The spot, that is with Adam Kepka takes care of the spot, does people, um, the youth, like we have youth as young as nine and 10 started smoking. They do 13 to 18. Then Cheryl, she takes care of our older adults, which is usually starts around 50 um, to 55. And then I kind of handle everybody in the middle. I target the bars, the nightclubs, where people gather to drink and smoke because like Susan said, they do target the LGBT community because they know that because you know we have a depressed or, or, or a different kind of community that they come out and they try to target us with making the ads look sexy, make it look cool to smoke. So we're out there trying to fight it and try to make people live healthier. Mm -hmm. So this smoking cessation um, portion of the Out Proud and Healthy mm -hmm. Research Project is just one of the phases that you're going through. Are there mm -hmm. other future programs that you're trying mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. go into? Like we're going to, um, like we said, get regular physician screenings, um, some mental health issues, overall healthy eating choices. That's the next part that's um, actually a part that I'm looking forward to because recently I started on a new healthy eating program and I've lost 30 pounds in two months. Mm -hmm. And so I was asking friends, hey, put down that cigarette. They were telling me, hey, put down that chicken wing. So mm -hmm. it's hard, you know, I can't <laughs> ask them to stop smoking if, not, if I'm not gonna stop eating so we're kind of doing the things hand in hand yeah yeah well we started collecting a lot or um kevin and jane the primary investigators have started collecting a lot of data about um substance abuse rates and lgbt persons um depression um mental illness rates which are way far off the chart higher than non-LGBT groups. Mm -hmm. um, and the Institute of Medicine, which is um, a non-pharmaceutically um, um, or non, you know, non-profit organization, experts from all over um, in the medical field and sciences get together and look at what research has been done in LGBT persons and finding out more about the disparities and sort of had put, put out a call that we need to do a lot more research on these groups, looking at what we can do to provide services so that people don't um, avoid care because they're afraid of being ridiculed at the doctor's office or don't um, prolong a surgery that they need because they don't have health insurance or don't only take half their medicine because they can't afford to go fill it because right. they don't you know, have a job that pays insurance and things like that. So there's a lot of disparities that we're trying to, you know, we have to gather data to, to be able to say, this is a huge disparity, let's put money here where we can try to figure because out Because we started collecting a lot of data in 2008 through 2012. We went to a lot of the pride festivals around the okay. state, For a, a lot of community time. events. Mm -hmm. and just to make sure that we had enough data to go out and say, yes, this is a need. This is what we need money for. Right. And um, not only is it going to be smoking, there's a lot of disparities that we have out there. We, um, I know several women that have never gone to get a mammogram because they're afraid of the ridicule. They're afraid of be, now how they're not being treated properly and looked at when they go to the doctor. So we do have a lot of health disparities. Mm -hmm. So smoking is just the tip of the iceberg. We thought we stopped there. We're going to go into alcohol and drug abuse. Um, like I said, healthy eating. It's just things that, that we need to focus on as to getting our community healthy. 
And one of the ways you guys are trying to get the word out about this program and about the research project is by creating a video competition mm -hmm. um, for people of all Missouri. You mentioned mm -hmm. everyone, not just LGBT members, but everybody. Yes, that's correct. So talk a little bit about that. I mean, that's really interesting. Well, this is exciting because this is something different because, you know, you can say all you want to about, hey, here's our, our smoking program, which is, let me go back and cover that for a second. It's an eight week program or you can go longer. You start off and you meet with the smoking coach and you just no, a quit smoking coach that we call them and you sit down and you have an evaluation and then upon that evaluation you set a quick date then you can see your counselor every week or every two weeks um, and everything is free that's what we try to tell people because like you said we are trying to serve people that are underinsured not insured low income people that will not go out and get these necessary services so what we've done to get the word out there about we have we're having a video contest and it's, um, we're giving away three $1,000 first prize and three $5,000 second prize. And there's 500, 500. 500, I'm sorry. Let's say 5,000, <laughs> I meant 500. I'm sorry. Thanks for correcting me. Um, and there's three categories. Out, <laughs> I'd be making one right now too. Out, proud, and healthy are the three categories. And there's winners and first winner up in each category. They're due by February 15th. Um, winners will be announced. I think it's April if I can find it, um, April 16th, and then the winners in each category will be shown at Q-Fest in St. Louis, which is our big LGBT film festival, um, which is April 22nd through the 26th. Okay. So we're looking up for it, and if you need more information, you can go to our Facebook page, which is Facebook backslash Out Proud and Healthy. Awesome. Well, thank you both for joining us today, and also thank you, Mid-Missouri, for watching in to our last edition of, or the December edition of Making a Difference. Welcome back, Mid-Missouri. Thanks. And here we are in the third leg of tonight's show. Unbelievable. Co-hosting with Angel Mendez. Angel, say hi. Hello. Now, now, Angel, where are you from? I am from a small town in Hiawatha, Kansas. But I go to school here at Stevens College. Did she say Kansas? I think she did. Outstanding. But you're in the journalism program here? At Stevens College, yes. Good for you. Good for you. Welcome. Now... Let's make our two two friends here look yeah. like champions. What do you think? I, uh, let's do it. Think we can do it? There's two of you. You should be able to handle it. Right. <laughs> Gloria Inlow, the manager of JCTV. That's right. We're doing what you do, just a couple a uh, couple miles south of you guys. Now Jefferson City is that is that a large town? I think it's a pretty substantial sized <laughs> town. <laughs> and we have Keisha King. Mm -hmm. Keisha, you're you're a journalism student yes. with Lincoln University. Yes. Welcome you two. Thank you. Thanks you came us. up to see how the big boys operate, right? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Columbia. Well, thank you for having us. So, so what what made you decide to come up here and hang with us? Well, you know, we've had a little bit of a problem uh, recently in Jefferson City with uh, securing funding for the television station. And actually, it was Cat TV that reached out to us and said, you know, we're public access to, and we are 30 minutes apart. We should be working together. And uh, you should be informing our community of what you're doing, Absolutely. and we should be informing yours of what we're doing. And really, there, 35 miles, 30 miles separates us. But in reality, the demographics are the same. Yeah. You know, we are really one of uh, the same, but, you know, a lot of people would disagree with that. <laughs> but we are. Well, we have similar similarities. You know, we have a college in our town, too. We're a college town. And yeah. uh, mid-Missouri, there's similar demographics throughout. Keisha, mm -hmm. what made you decide to make this trek all the way up here to Columbia, Missouri? Well, I think that it's very important for, as a student of Lincoln University and somebody who spends a lot of time at JCTV to, you know, let the public know the issues and struggles that JCTV is going through as far as funding and taking mm -hmm. care of, you know, the partnership between Lincoln University and Jefferson City, Missouri. So I feel like that's very important. And I feel like, you know, maybe, maybe there's somebody that's in high school right now trying to find some place that they would like to go for college. And I think that Lincoln University is some place that they should choose. And, you know, I feel like being here will help with that. Of course you do. <laughs> Lincoln is a good school. It is. It's, it's, a, a, it's a great school. school. You know, uh, we just think we're a little bit better up here. 
No, well, just kidding. Hey, I'm a Lincoln just graduate kidding. too, and Are they you? never got rid of me. I love it. I love it. So, how long have you been the uh, station manager? There? I have been at JCTV for four years, okay. and I lie a little bit. I did leave uh, Jefferson City for a while. I went to some different markets and worked in radio, but I made my way back to Jefferson City and back to Lincoln. Welcome home. Yes. Good for you. Yeah. Now, Angel, you come from a journalism program as well. Mm -hmm. What's Cat TV been for you? Cat TV has definitely given me a lot of hands-on experience that I definitely wouldn't have got going to a big school like Mizzou or yeah. KU Absolutely. or anything like that. So definitely being here and going to Stevens and having Cat TV in our basement, literally, has definitely <laughs> given me a leg up when it comes to sure. Sure. production. Absolutely. Keisha? What about JCTV? How has it helped you as a student? JCTV has tremendously helped me. It's helped me as far as hands-on experience, like Angel just said about Cat TV, and it's also given me the opportunity to build my portfolio that I would like to use and submit to future employers. It's also helped me meet some people in the community as well when they come in and do productions at JCTV. And it's also helped me, you know, as far as with the journalism department, I'm able to, you know, when I'm in class with my friends, hey, you guys, you guys should come to JCTV and volunteer. I was able I would, to um, get two of my friends to come to JCTV and be involved in JCTV as well. So, you know, it's just, it, it helps a lot, tremendously. Not just me, but with everybody else, my department, the city, everybody. And you know, Keisha's a senior. She's getting ready to graduate and leave us, but she's been there since she was a freshman. Yeah. And that's the thing wow. is when students first day on campus, they can come over to the TV station and play in our electronic playground, as we call it. And, and Students like Keisha are a great resource for you. They you know, just are. a phenomenal resource. Uh, volunteers are a phenomenal resource for you. Now, you and I were talking, and in, in in the program we do, we have here, making a difference. We we talked about. I don't I don't prepare a lot. It's I want the passion. Being being a, a an old police officer, I know a little bit about exchanges, conversations. It's all about the passion. We, in, in Boone County, through, through CAT TV, we get to speak to a lot of people who give back to the communities. How about Jeff City TV, JC TV? What about you guys? What's your mission? What's your focus? What we want to do is give a voice to people who don't have one. You know, we have a lot of great organizations in our community, the United Way of Central Missouri, mm -hmm. uh, the Red Cross, Jefferson City Daycare Center, which really helps single, um, struggling mothers a lot, um, minorities in our, our city. We want to give them a way to get their message out that they're not going to get from, you know, network TV. And we also like to train people. We have a lot of students that come in and we try to give them hands-on training, but we also just have community volunteers who maybe want to learn how to uh, shoot video so that they can tape their kids' basketball games. Or they want to enter a competition and they need to learn how to do a little bit of editing, a little bit of uh, video production. We like to do that too. And we just get to cover some really fun events. We have Christmas parades and concerts that we're taping this month. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I mean, to get to bring some really neat individuals and groups, people who give back to our communities mm -hmm. and, and have a chance for them to, to spotlight what they do for our entire viewing area. It's, it's amazing. And, and I would like to add, you know, at, at Lincoln University and JCTV, they have a partnership. So a lot of the upper division journalism classes also use the studio um, in JCTV. So it helps the future and it helps people give back, but it also helps, you know, the future generation of students, you know, prepare themselves to go out into the world and help other people. So we can agree this is, this is a really great opportunity for yes, a lot of people. And the fact that you're having trouble finding funding is a pretty big deal. What's the, what's the biggest challenge that you've had to overcome or are trying to overcome to receive this funding? Well, right now we're funded solely by the city. They give us a grant, $165,000 a year, pays our three employees salary and benefits to run the entire uh, TV channel, basically, doing everything from video production to just day-to-day -day management. Um, and the city has wanted to cut that funding for a while now to you know, do things that are necessary, you know, build potholes, build sidewalks, that sort of thing. But I think that we as a community have to get the message out that all these different organizations use JCTV, all these different people are invested in the future of JCTV, and we think it's something that's worth funding. Right. Cat TV is a, is a phenomenal model for you. And, and I know that, that anyone from this organization would be more than happy to do whatever they could to, to help your organization. And that's what it's all about. It's, 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 you've got to keep that avenue open 
for, for community messages. Absolutely. Have to do it. Yes. Folks, do you, do you have a website? We do. It's uh, jctvaccess.com. And you can go there, learn more about us. You can download a volunteer application or a membership form uh, if you want to support G uh, community access television. You can also watch us online. We have a YouTube channel that if you go to that website, you'll take us there and see some of the programming we do. Ladies and gentlemen, that does it for 2012. It's been a great year. Thank you so much and have a blessed season.